A very good evening and a welcome to the Bateau Turf, the home of Fremantle Coburn Hockey Club, or the Mighty Magpies as they like to be known. It is round two of the Hockey WA men's premier grade. Afraid to say it's been delayed slightly here. We've had uh, rain tumbling from the skies. We've had fork lightning. And, of course, the rules are that we must wait 30 minutes after lightning before we can take to the field of play. So the officials have been watching the skies. And I'm pleased to say that, uh, touch wood, we're all right for a start in about three minutes' time. Certainly that is the hoped outcome. And uh, it is still raining, the still falling from the skies. And I must thank uh, Matt Allen and his crew here because they've moved our broadcast gantry back under cover. Otherwise, we would have been out in the rain ourselves. And uh, it is going to obscure probably one of the corners that you will struggle to just see because we're just slightly, the stand might be in our way. But hopefully it will not spoil your enjoyment of today's game. And their opponents, of course, are hailed. We'll take a look now at the Fremantle lineup, and they are without several players. Tim Deven is missing, and uh, of course, they're also missing Declan Spencer and Josh White. And also, I have to say now, there's been a late withdrawal. Matt Bird has had to withdraw. He actually dislocated his shoulder last night, so Chad Giles comes in, and that is actually the only change in the Fremantle lineup from the team that lost their opening game. 3-2 against UWA. Aaron Hazel scored two goals in that game and he'll be the player to look out for wearing the number 12. Of course, at the back, Darren McCormack will be doing his heart best to keep Hale at bay and Ben Rennie in goal as well. Dylan Martin, we heard he was probably going to be going to a wedding, but I've since been told that he is playing tonight, so that is good news as well for Fremantle Coburn. Turning our attention now to Hale. Well, they've got a few changes from last week. Fred Gray is not starting, and nor is Blake Murdoch. They're being replaced by Charlie Johnston, Josh Bowen back, and Charlie Norman. They only had 15 on the park last week, so they've gone with a full quota of 16 for this game. Jared Crick will be in goal, and again, he will be tested from penalty corners, and it'll be looking to Braden King again to be the rock at the back alongside Blake Wallace. And it's just going to be the midfield. If they can just get the cohesion there and feed the forwards, then that is going to be the key. I think Charlie Norman's addition, he's always full of running, always a pest around the defence, and uh, he could be a really key attribute for Hale in this match today. I'm Ashley Morrison, looking forward to sharing all of the action with you in this game. I can tell you that our umpires for this game are Ben Beckett and Jackson Geddes. And just for those of you who are wondering where the mighty goal scorer Liam Quinn is, well, he's in the same place as Josh White, the Fremantle player. They are both in Zimbabwe at the moment. Of course, Josh White married to Liam's sister, Kyra. And, of course, the Flynn family hailing from Zimbabwe. Both Liam Flynn's parents having represented Zimbabwe at international level. And so they've gone home there for a short spell. And should just actually wish... Uh, Erin Flynn, I think she turned 30 while they were over there. Is that right? I think it was. Hopefully I haven't added a few years to her age. She'll kill me for that. But uh, I think it was her birthday the other day. So hopefully she had a wonderful day. Well, I'm pleased to say the rain is easing. It is still falling down here fairly steadily. But hopefully it will not affect the game in any way. Just looking at last season, Hale finished second on the ladder. Fremantle Coburn, they finished in eighth spot. Tim Deven, their coach, has done plenty of recruitment. Although he'll be a little bit frustrated because the development players are not allowed to play until after round four. And we've been told that the Kookaburras will not be playing until after the Olympics. Even if they're not involved, they will not be playing in the league in case anyone gets injured and they might have to step up. So... None of the international players will be playing in the Premier Grade until after the Olympics and the high-performance or development squad players will be back in the competition after round four. And certainly Fremantle Coburn have signed a few very talented young players. Liam Henderson, Nathan Zinner, Cooper Burns, just three of the names that spring to mind. Hale are out on the turf. Fremantle in one last huddle, as you can see there. Just beginning to break up now. Tim Deven 
having to sit this one out. He broke his collarbone at Kieran Abbott's Bucks party in Bali. And it wasn't, I've been told, doing anything untoward. Apparently, he just slipped and fell awkwardly. And he said it was all rather embarrassing. I think he would have liked to have had a good story behind it. Because Devo is uh, very keen on a good story. Tim Deven, one of the great entertainers, if you're in his company. So it will be Fremantle to get us underway in their familiar black and white strip. Both teams looking for their first win of the season in this round two. Whistle goes, and a little dummy there. Thought about going back, decided to go forward. That was Aaron Hazel. Goes straight into the shins of Josh Bowen, playing his first game of the season. Good pass again to Hazel. A long corner, won by Fremantle. Jimmy McPherson running across, but told to just get forward. McCormick plays it back into the defensive line. Again, into the leaping Sam McCulloch. It must have caught his stick. That was Dylan Martin that was trying to clear it. Martin coming across now. Gets to the ball. No, he doesn't. It's uh, McCulloch who got there. Get my 22s mixed up for a split second there. Sam McCulloch. Certainly a fair few inches shorter than Dylan Martin. A little mistrap in the midfield that time coming from Marcus Jorgensen. Luckily for Hale, it doesn't come to anything for Fremantle. Dylan Martin, of course, who won a silver medal at the Tokyo Olympic Games. He'd literally only just gone up into the Kookaburra squad and Colin Batch took him to Tokyo. Personally, I've always been impressed with him. Jack Faulkner now looking to try and get around the back, forced along the baseline. Unfortunately, the netting just getting in the way there, which is obviously for to protect the fans. And because we're in a position that's a little bit further back, it is, in fact, just blocking our view occasionally, and we apologise for that. Blake Wallace now feeding it forward. Bowen turns Gobin Gilt. Nice turn at the top of the circle. Good work being done that time by Charlie Norman. Taken quickly by Hale, around the outside, but couldn't be kept in by Jack Faulkner on the baseline. Faulkner, I think, was just a little bit stuck on his heels and off balance as that was played to him. Probably needed to just be delayed a split second longer. Comes to Dylan Martin now. Flick of the wrist, throws it forward. Bowen comes across, brought it down on the backhand. Good play by him. Fed forward again. It's Charlie Norman, lively in these opening minutes. Plays it again. Good ball into the circle. This time it's collected by Sam Cabral, the Canadian player. Still with Hale, and it's saved from Norman by Ben Rennie. Rennie just dropping that ball down. It'll be a long corner. Did well to prevent giving away a penalty corner. Ben Rennie, of course, who was also part of the Kookaburra squad for a short period. And that ball in from outside the circle. Rennie just letting it run into his goal. So it'll be a 16. Dylan Martin again. Goes wide out onto the right-hand side. Thrown long and, well, it was a really good idea for Harrison Kima. Fraser Gilly, the man who threw the long pass. It was a really good idea. Just had a little bit too much juice on it for Kima to get underneath it. Braden King into the midfield, but good steal from Gill. Gill should receive again. Two Hale players closing him down, forcing him to go back into the defensive line to Darren McCormick. Good work by Ashton and Faulkner it was for Hale. Stolen away by McCulloch once more. Stolen back by Fremantle. Good work on the far side. A real tussle going on there. It was Reese Angwin, I think, that was uh, 
doing the good work. Well, maybe, no, it was Fraser Gilly again. Just was surprised to see him that far forward. Gilly collects now. That's Anguin there. Oh, a lovely pass through now for Chad Giles. Giles, the late replacement, hit a foot just outside the circle. That was a good delayed pass. Sam Ashton forced to go back though and misdirected pass. Nice touch again from Aaron Hazel. Fremantle at the moment probably dominating the midfield, certainly getting more space than Hale. Whenever Hale get the ball in the midfield, they're hemmed in. Angle pass will go out of play. It'll be a 16 to Hale. Braden King over the ball. King throws it long. Leaping into the night sky and doing really well that time was Gill. Hale's ball from the side. It was taken quickly by Fukunaga. And to Fukunaga, who was part of the WA under-21s that won the national championship. He originally hails from Japan and played for the Japanese national team under-18s. A little bit of lightning in the distance. Hopefully the technical bench hasn't seen that. and We can keep going. Jorgensen on the ball. Comes back to King, square to Benji Austin. Austin had to just go back a few paces to retrieve that. Has fallen heavily there, was looking at the umpire. Free hit was awarded to him. Trying to spin off McPherson. McPherson just a little push in the back there. That was on Sam Ashton. Hale still have the ball. Comes square again to Jorgensen now. He tries to slide a pass through to Norman. Intercepted top of the circle by Fremantle Coburn. Kima was carrying it out and he was impeded, so it'll be a free hit to Fremantle Coburn. Haven't even reached the halfway stage of this first quarter. Start of this game, as I mentioned, delayed because of lightning. And I can tell you now that the rain is literally, it's just the odd speck now, and we've got a few brave fans have come out and are sitting on the chairs down below us. Umbrella was up, but it's gone down. That was lifted by Kima into the body that time of Josh Bowen. Ashton looked as if he was going to take it. In the end, he's leaving it for Hrobola. Hrobola throws it into the circle on the baseline, brought down. Not the best trap, but uh, still with Hale as it's... Fukunaga, I think, trying to get the ball into the circle and cause a few problems. It got to the top of the D, but Fremantle managed to scramble it clear. That was in the end, good defensive play from Nick Jennings. He was getting the ball away from the danger zone. Daryl McCormick goes square. Dylan Martin up the side. Gill deflecting it down the line. It took a touch, I think, off the hail stick, so it will be still Fremantle Coburn's ball. They've taken it quickly, sliding it towards the top of the D. Bowen was back there. He's lost it, though, so it will be a free hit to Gill. Gill plays it quickly. And took it, though, from the wrong spot. Jimmy McPherson takes it now. Goes wide to Gill. Gill tries to play it into the circle. It was still going to be Fremantle's ball. Hale player's being told to retreat the required distance. Comes back to Dylan Martin. He'll look like he was going to ping that one straight down the middle. He did, but it was Braden King with a good block. Martin not happy. Strolling back now. As Hale go on the break, it's Fukunaga. Fukunaga versus Rennie. Rennie smothers and recovers well as the ball was behind him and plays it out over the baseline. It'll be a long corner right out on the left-hand side. Uh, Fukunaga had a chance there to open the scoring for Hale. Just trying to remember if he's actually scored for the Premier Grade side. I'm not sure that he has. 
or if he has, he's only got the one goal from memory. But it was a great block from Braden King. Not quite sure what Dylan Martin was upset about. I think he was maybe frustrated he just didn't get the ball in the circle. Good work again in the midfield coming from Sam Ashton, just dropping back in that pocket for Hale. Nice turn and not kept in play on the far side that time. So now Fremantle again, they try the diagonal pass. There was nobody in that space and Benji Austin read it really quickly. Cuts infield just to pull away from the recovering run that came that time from Matt Edgar. Nice turn again from Hazel. Hazel keeps possession, stumbles on halfway but got the pass to Gill. Play on is the call from the umpire. Gill goes back this time to Lee Cormack. Lee Cormack, one of the recruits now for Fremantle Coburn. He's a player that played for Gosford City Hockey Club in New South Wales up on the Central Coast. And, of course, their nickname as well is the Magpies. So it's been a pretty easy assimilation. Hail again. Surging forward, good run from McCulloch in from the left-hand side. Held up, top of the circle, a really important tackle that was in the end. Great work from Lane Carr. Lane Carr comes from Matcham in New South Wales. Interestingly, he only took up hockey when uh, he was filling in for a team after he played rugby union. And after playing one game, he decided this was the sport for him. Lifted towards the circle, Dylan Martin blocks it, but it was danger, so free out for Hale with just under four minutes left in the first quarter. Lane Carr just sorting out his shoot. And surrounding Dylan Martin, dispossessed, and that's a good run into the circle. Great chance, shot goes in. A wonderful finish that time coming from Sam Cabral. He opens his account for Hale. Well, he just pulled away from the defender and then it was just a case of beating Rennie. Played it into the turf and it went into the top corner of Benny of Rennie's goal into the right-hand top corner. So 12th minute gone. And it is Fremantle Coburn nil, Hale one. This is a game I can tell you that normally averages five goals a match. So, make sure you don't go anywhere. And I can tell you that only one match going back to May 2017 has seen either team not score. And that was Fremantle didn't score in 2019. For 14 matches, we've only had one occasion where one team has not scored. Coaches might not like that one. They would prefer, obviously, a clean sheet but of course hockey you don't see clean sheets quite that often so a foot has been called it will be a hail ball there was a little bit of confusion between both sides as to who the free hit was for and where it was to be taken it's gone over the side another little flash of lightning over behind the school on the far side there's no rain and there's no thunder so Hopefully we're all right. Lovely turn. That's a beautiful turn from Lane Carr. Hale, though, back in possession. It goes off Carr over the side, and I think he was appealing that it had been lifted. Lane Carr also played for Gosford City Hockey Club, so another migrating magpie. Wallace, good pass forward from him, managing to pick out Sam McCulloch, but it comes back again. Wallace once more. That Van Salm, short pass to King. King goes to the air. Norman collects wide on the left-hand side, takes a tumble. I think he got a slight little nudge in the back that time from Lee Cormack. So it's still going to be a 
hail free hit inside the 22. Played outside back to King. King will look to slide that one in. Looking for the deflection was McCulloch. Good defence again from Gill. Stolen away by Wallace. Long way forward and that should be a penalty corner. Well, it's not. It's a free hit. I thought the player there, Charlie Norman, was clipped almost to break up the attack. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh. Umpire obviously a lot closer to the action. Maybe it was just clumsiness. But players today are so clever at making things look accidental. Given back again. Dylan Martin just smashing it straight to the hail player. Coming in strong again, McPherson into the back of Ashton. And there goes the hooter, and that is the end of the first quarter. It's been lively, attacking at both ends, but it is Hale, the visitors, who go into the first break with the lead. It is Fremantle Cobra nil, Hale one. Welcome back to the Bateau Turf at Lakelands where Fremantle Huddle just breaking up, ready to come out for the second quarter. And they will be looking to try and find a goal from somewhere to get back on level terms. Training by one goal to nil. Will be Fremantle Coburn again to get the second quarter underway. Push back that time by Nick Jennings. Chad Giles getting a nice early touch in this quarter as well, but it's turned over again by Martin. Into the circle come Hale. Good defence lifted over the first stick and across the goal it goes. Chance. Brilliant save by Rennie to deny Charlie Norman. Rennie was at his near post. Got across as Norman flicked towards goal and somehow got it round the post. Brilliant by the former Hale player. Ben Rennie with a sharp save to get this quarter underway. Hale looking to try and stretch their lead immediately. And Blake Wallace, a little bit frustrated. You could see what he was hoping, but Sam Cabral, new player to the side, maybe just not quite reading or on the same wavelength yet as Blake Wallace. I'm sure that will come in time. Played wide by Chad Giles. Infield from Gilly, it got a touch off Jack Fortner, recovered by Giles, back it goes to Martin. McCormick wide now. Again, he zips that one up the side and off it goes off Matt Van Salm over the sideline. Fremantle Coburn now getting players forward. Really didn't have too many in the forward line that time to be able to spark an attack quickly. Martin again, short pass. Goes wide this time. McCormack. 
playing his 445th game for Fremantle Coburn. Daryl McCormack. And uh, you just feel last weekend was probably a little bit special. He's 44 years old and played his 444th game. Martin let that one bounce and then had to scurry. No hail player chasing, so he should keep it in play with ease. McCormack is wide in the middle. Back to Dylan Martin. It's almost like they're going through a warm-up routine, but Martin is going to have to go back to McCormack again. Gilly has pulled wide. He's got an option on the left if he wishes to use Gilly. McCormack in the end decides to throw it to the air, and Fanselm didn't bring that one down. And it's his free hit, even though it went into the body of Matt Edgar. Edgar is saying, well, surely came off his stick. He didn't bring it down. It went into my body. But I think the umpire feeling that Edgar wasn't the required distance And good pressure from Kyle Webster. Kyle Webster, another Gosford boy. Goben Gill, good pass from him, managing to pick out Lane Carr. Gill again. Gill goes back to Martin. Angle pass again, finds Carr. Carr was looking to feed it to Gill, but it was intercepted well by Jorgensen. And Jorgensen's pass was a little bit short for Faulkner. Faulkner's done well, though, to get the better of Chad Giles and keep possession for Hale, although penalised in the end. And Jorgensen just pushing the ball back. He should just leave it because uh, Fremantle Coburn was saying he played it after the whistle, which he did, but he was, in the umpire's opinion, playing it back to where the free hit should be taken. Jennings now to Martin. Jennings again. Feeding it forward. Intercepted once more by Hale. Not the best of balls forward. And picked up again by Jennings into the circle. Shot will come in over the crossbar. Uh, got a second bite of the cherry that time. Matt Edgar. And Edgar, of course, former Lions, and says he's a part-time music producer. Uh, Jorgensen being told he took that from the wrong position, so ball goes back to Wallace, who takes it from pretty much the same position. Benji Austin. Ashton goes back to King. Austin again. Nice turn from Fukunaga. Well, apparently he was shielding the ball with his body. Or maybe it just touched the foot. Gobin Gill goes back to Dylan Martin, pressing now. It's gone all the way through. Jared Crick with a nice clearance. Still in play, though. Fremantle Coburn. Trying to find a way to attack. Another free hit taken quickly by Fremantle Coburn. Into the circle, play towards the goal. Crick with a superb save at his near post. Well, it was a first time shot that came in that time from Reese Anguin. And Crick had to be in the right position, and he was. Reese Anguin, of course, the former curtain player. Was player of the year for them on several occasions, but when they're relegated, has decided wanted to stay in the Premier grade. Stolen away. Good steal again from Darren McCormick. And a free hit to Fremantle Coburn just outside the circle. McCormack stepping forward, carrying the ball to where the umpire says the free hit should be taken. In the end, he leaves it. Chad Giles plays it to McCormack. McCormack into the circle, driving towards goal. Blake Wallace picks it up for Hale. Played wide again. Hale managed to squeeze it out towards the sideline and not kept in play by Fanselm. Playing on quickly is Aaron Hazel. Hazel weaving run back away from the circle. Wallace intercepts and clears it up to halfway. 
A solid defence at the back for Hale because they were under a bit of pressure there from Fremantle Coburn. To the Martin again. Nice turn from Matt Edgar. Stolen away, though, by Benji Austin, who's getting plenty of touches tonight. Austin, oh, just took a touch, I think. Oh, took a touch off Edgar, but Benji Austin gets, uh, well, he gets a reminder that maybe he did get a touch. Darren McCormack halting. Forcing King to change direction. Goes back to Dylan Martin again. It's a good spell by Fremantle Coburn. Martin again. Martin decides to carry it forward. Good work again by Fukunaga. Comes back again now to Lee Cormack. Keeps it out for Fremantle Coburn. That was a lucky deflection that time. Coming for Nick Jennings. Jennings has kept it alive for Fremantle Coburn. Good pass towards the edge of the circle, but free hit goes to Hale. Now Fremantle Coburn moving the ball well. Making the Hale players change direction. Short pass into the midfield. Good work by Cabral again. Canadian player. Real pressure on Ashton there. He did well to keep it with two magpies looking to steal it, as they do. Really well played by Harrison Kima, keeping that in play and also kept it with Fremantle, but they've lost it now. Fukunaga goes infield again. A little shove in the back for Cabral. Smile on the face of Jimmy McPherson. He loves the physicality. McCormack goes wide again. Comes back to him once more from Cormac. Dylan Martin now, wide on the left flank. Gets closed down. Good work again by Sam Ashton, who looks to close down. In fact, uh, it wasn't. It was Bowen. My apologies. Breaking forward now for Hale. Played into the pass of Norman. Norman dispossessed inside the circle. And again, the netting just in the way there. Preventing us from seeing exactly what happened behind play. Ashton goes back, closing down is Angwin. Angwin putting good pressure that time on to Braden King. Ashton has it again. This time it's Hazel looking to put pressure on. Good pass, good lead from Fukunaga. Didn't get the ball inside the circle. Good defence from Fremantle Coburn. Lane Kerr played it wide. Carr rather, not Kerr. Hale pressing high, trying to just stop the ball being played out, but just catching the foot that time of Charlie Norman. So it's a free hit to Fremantle Coburn. To the Martin, to Daryl McCormick again. Gill was wide, but lurking was Cabral. In fact, it was uh, Charlie Johnston lurking. My apologies for that one. That's good work by Charlie Johnston. Just his second game, I believe, for Hale in the top grade. Goes wide again. Johnston with another good run. Inside the circle it goes. He couldn't get on the end of the pass from Fukunaga. Charlie Johnston is 19 in August this year. Went to the Bunbury Cathedral Grammar School. Bunbury, of course, two hours south of Perth. Nice turn again from Aaron Hazel. Played it that time into the foot of Benji Austin. Lovely pass this time. Into the circle again. That was Kale Webster. He's still got the ball for Fremantle Coburn. Webster keeping possession well. Double teamed by Hale players and then just tried to slip that one with a backhand into the circle. Looking for the run of Harrison Kimo, but it just went over the baseline. Wasn't too far away. Down the line it goes again from Webster, but this time it's Hazel can't get on the end of it.
Webster went to Tagara Lakes Secondary School in Tumbi Umbi, I think is the name of the place there, which is a pretty unique Australian name. Carried out of defence that time by Jorgensen. He's turned it over, though, to McPherson. McPherson to Hazel. Coming on the overlap was a good run by Carr. Hazel decided to go himself. Wins a free hit. Plays it to Carr now. Carr gets inside the circle, but it's played onto his foot. Good defensive work coming again from Hale. And that was Cabral. Sam Cabral comes from Vancouver. Used to play for the Vancouver Hawks. Good intercept, Fraser, Fraser Gilly saw the pass was coming and made sure he got ahead of the Hale attacker. We've got just over two minutes left now in this second quarter. Hale still leading by one goal to nil. Haven't had a single penalty corner as yet. Down the line it goes and Matt Edgar will leave the ball to be played in by a teammate. He makes a run forward. And Freeman will find an equaliser before half-time. Slight mistake again at the back from Hale. Great run into the circle. Played across the face of goal. Crick clears it, but he managed to kick it straight into the foot of Benji Austin. And just as I said, no penalty corners. Freeman will win the first penalty corner of the match. Which gives me a chance to promote the Magpod. The Magpies are now producing their very own podcast hosted on their very own YouTube page that you're watching this game on. Once you finish watching, please like and subscribe and make sure you don't miss any episodes of the Magpod, the podcast for the Magpies. Not many clubs putting out a podcast, so great to see that initiative from Fremantle Coburn. Gill goes to the baseline. Lining up is Stefan Mute at the second battery and it's a good flick at the first battery but off the pads that was Dylan Martin trying his luck it's a long corner good defensive play by Jared Crick drilled towards the circle Braden King preventing Chad Giles's ball getting anywhere inside the circle Ben Rennie a long way out of his goal feeds it forward now to Dylan Martin as we're about to enter the final minute of the first half. Played forward, deflected in the midfield by McCulloch. McCulloch gets the ball in tight space. Lovely turn by him. The spinning Tasmanian on halfway. And couldn't get his foot out of the way then. He was trying to leap, but uh, lifted cleverly that time. All right, Cormac. Down the line again it goes, but it's stolen, and Hale have got two on one if they can get it in quickly. And, well, what is that going to be? Oh, oh, gosh. I think Chad Giles is very, very lucky, and Fremantle Coburn, that I thought at least it was a penalty corner. And Hale were looking across to the side. Sam Ashton, I think, was the player that was impeded, in my opinion, but not in the umpire's opinion. And the umpire's opinion is the only one that counts as the Hooter goes for the end of the first half. No scores in that quarter. So it is still Sam Cabral's goal, the difference between the two teams as we head into halftime. It is Fremantle Coburn nil, Hale Hockey Club 1.
Welcome back to the Baddow Turf as the Fremantle huddle looks to start breaking up. I think Tim Deven still has a few things to say. They certainly put pressure on Hale in that second quarter. Jared Crick with a couple of really good saves to keep Hale in this game and to keep their lead intact. I have to say, seeing all those sponsors, I just wonder if the person that put their show reel together was uh, a little bit tongue-in-cheek, as you saw Melville Family Denit Dental, and that's followed by Blue Tongue. I think someone's having a bit of a laugh here at Fremantle Coburn, but they're not laughing at the result at the moment or the score at the moment. It's not a result just yet. But they needn't panic because since they moved to Lakelands and the Bado Turf, I can tell you there have been three matches between these two teams and Fremantle Coburn have won one and drawn one. So Hale have never won at this venue as yet. Is this going to be the first night they do it or will we see a comeback from Fremantle Coburn? Certainly you feel there's plenty left in this game. It has been pretty tight so far. And for those Fremantle Coburn fans that joined us late, Matt Bird is missing. He dislocated his shoulder during training last night. He popped out when he was sliding into the circle. So he's had it put back in, but will be out for a short period of time. And, of course, they are missing a few other players as well in Tim Deven, Declan Spencer, and Josh White will be back from Zimbabwe, I believe, not next week, but the week after. So Hale get us underway. Sam McCulloch pushes back this time and King throws it long. Jorgensen running into the circle. Ben Rennie puts his boot through it and over the side it goes. Solid goalkeeping from big Ben Rennie. Trying to knock it and run past. Well, it's broken fortuitously for Hale. Matt Fansell goes down into the corner. Closed down now by Gill. Still has possession. Stolen away, but Hale got it back into the circle. Trying to turn that time was Charlie Norman. Still with Hale, somehow. Played in front of the goalkeeper. Again, Rennie to the rescue. Clears it away from McCulloch. McCulloch was spinning around as if he thought it should have been a penalty corner. Then I think he thought about it and realised that it wasn't. It was a long corner. Played in by Cabral but hadn't carried the ball five metres before he played it into the circle, so free hit to Fremantle Coburn. Daryl McCormack plays it down the line and just a touch takes it over the side from Marcus Jorgensen. Chases back, that one just ran past Lane Carr. Picked up though well by Angwin. Angwin dispossessed just outside the 23 metres. Lane Kerr, Carr rather, decides to take it again into the circle. Nice turn and cleared momentarily. Uh, King in the end, it came up off his stick. There were hearts in mouths for Hale supporters. Braden King slaps that one forward. Josh Bowen. Bowen, of course, who plays pennant tennis. As well, a really accomplished sportsman. I think he was playing for Alexander Park. I'm not sure if he still is this year, but certainly was in the past. And coming in from the side goes back to Blake Wallace. King, a little flick of the wrist. McPherson comes across. Full stretch, but it breaks kindly for Cabral. Cabral turns away from trouble, impeded momentarily or held up momentarily by Fraser Gilly. No foul, it was a good tackle by Gilly. Little break again from Cabral. Too many players. He gets it through the back post, and again, Rennie was there, foot outstretched, making sure that Faulkner couldn't get the touch. Went off the inside of his pad and then over the baseline. So it's a long corner again to Hale. Umpire signalling that the defenders must be five or certainly that the ball must carry five metres. It's a good tackle that time by Cormac. That's Lee Cormac and drilled in by Bowen. No one able to get on the end of it for Hale.
just waiting for a ball. Ben Rennie retrieves it, throws it out to Dylan Martin. Sonny Hale pushing high in this third quarter, the start of it, hoping to try and get maybe a second goal and just take the pressure off a little bit. It's a really good tackle again from Benji Austin, just taking it away from Aaron Hazel. Hazel almost wondered where the ball had gone. And that's come up off the stick of Jilly. Again, it's Austin plays on quickly. McPherson coming back, got a stick, just deflected it away from Hale. Good steal almost by Norman, but whistle goes. Jilly now looks up as he receives it. Turns, sees nothing much on, and he's going to have to weave a bit of magic. Good steal, though, from Jorgensen. Managed to find McCulloch. And then McPherson, I thought he'd lifted that one up into the body of Charlie Johnston, but umpire saw it otherwise. It must have got up off Johnston's stick into his own body. So again, thrown forward into the midfield. Sam Ashton turns, two players close him down. Ashton was looking for the foot of Harrison Kima, but he kept his foot out the way. McPherson, though, finds the foot of Ashton. Jimmy McPherson looks up, sees the run inside the circle, brought down by Matt Van Salm, but let it run off his stick. So Fremantle Coburn get it played across the face of goal and just not able to get the finishing touch was Kima. He was coming in and he was in the right position. It's Aaron Hazel who pounced on the miscontrol from Matt Van Salm. And that's going to be kept in play by Hale into the circle. Good work. Fukunaga has won a penalty corner. Hale's first of the evening. Well, what can they do? Dylan Martin denied when he took the one for Fremantle Coburn. Fremantle Coburn would like to invite you to come and try the come and try session. Join us at Fremantle Coburn Hockey Club and give hockey a try. Wednesday, the 17th of April, we'll be opening the turf to new junior players from the age of 5 to 17. It's a free session and it will get underway at 4.30 p.m. So anyone that is between the ages of 5 and 17 wants to give hockey a go, come down here to the Bato Turf on the 17th of April at 4.30 p.m. So McCulloch at the second battery. Ian Hrobala at the first. Still waiting for the defence to take up their positions inside the goal. Hrobala at the first. And it goes to him. He flicks low. Good save again, Ben Rennie. And cleared away superbly by Fraser Gilly. So both teams, good defence from penalty corners. And it keeps the score. That's 1-0 still in favour of Hale. Hale, though, pushing to try and find a second goal from somewhere. Jorgensen beats one into the circle along the baseline. It's gone off Rennie again. So Ben Rennie to the rescue once more. Former Hale player, played also for Kelburn in Scotland, Ben Rennie. appearances I believe it was 12 for the Kookaburras certainly a specialist indoor goalkeeper and done very well for Australia in that position good work coming through the midfield by Stefan Mute and from the port of Spain actually was born in Glencoe in Trinidad and Tobago in Diego Martin Kunaga got it into Bowen. Uh, it was Ashton rather with the shot back to Fukunaga. Ricocheted off the pads of Rennie. Fukunaga trying to turn. Good defence once more from Chad Giles who came in for the injured Matt Bird. Giles though with plenty of experience at this level. Jimmy McPherson stepping forward just pushing that one over the side. Halfway through the third quarter. The side it goes, trying to turn there is Webster. Webster gets the free hit for Fremantle Coburn. McPherson throws it long. 
And that was good play. I think that was Krobola who brought that one down. Hale still pressing. Webb still almost falling backwards there. Getting low now to try and make the tackle. Okay, Webster, who has played a fair amount of indoor hockey as well in New South Wales. Won gold with the New South Wales under-18s. And that pass really wrong-footed. Lane Carr. McCormack. Was into the foot that time of Johnston. Oh, nice touch coming that time from Nick Jennings. Jennings with the ball again. Tried to go between two Hale players, but off the stick of Krobola and over the side it goes. Back to Darren McCormick. Dylan Martin there. Short pass into Lane Carr. Square he goes to Gilly. Carr again. Nice pass forward, looking for the run of Harrison Kima, but it just bobbled in front of Kima. So Hale stole it back, but they've lost it now, turned it over unnecessarily. And again, coming back to clean up was Dylan Martin. Martin on the ball again now, closed down by the tireless efforts of Charlie Norman. It will come to Norman now. Norman has a runner on the outside, tried to play that out but Darren McCormack is just too experienced and too clever well, still an absolute star of a player Darren McCormack has won the Olympians medal for the fairest and best and he's won the fairest and best at uh, Fremantle Coburn so many times that he should almost keep it like a Lonsdale belt Cormac again, feeding it forward. Wasn't trapped that time by Jennings. Freeman a little trying to apply pressure in the bottom corner. And good skills being shown that time by Braden King. Free hit though goes the way of Freeman Coburn. So just being told to bring the ball in from the side. Looking to play on quickly again is Jennings. Jennings loses out, but over the baseline it went. So it'll be a long corner to Fremantle Coburn. Darren McCormack quickly gets the ball on the spot. Thought about going short to Lane Carr. Instead, he goes wide to Lee Cormack. Comes back to Dylan Martin now. That's a lovely pass forward again. McPherson having to scurry and slide, almost losing his shorts at the same time. Hail throw it to the air and Gill comes across. It's going to be Fremantle Coburn's ball. Sam Ashton penalised. Lane Carr coming more and more into the game. Josh Bowen penalised this time. Well, did Carr stop that? It's played into the circle. Kale Webster with the shot on the turn. Deflected wide. Well, a really, really good opportunity for them to get an equaliser. Webster played it in, but Jennings just couldn't deflect it inside the post. Just went wide. But a really good chance for Fremantle. Faulkner chasing that one, but he won't get there. Nick Jennings has plenty of experience. He's played for Moorbank Liverpool in... New South Wales and won the Sydney Premiership twice and played in four grand finals with them. So plenty of experience there. And that's why you might have heard him well, just telling himself off after he missed that opportunity. Cabral playing it forward again. McCulloch feeding it. But there's Charlie Norman who's not going to get on the end of that. Sam McCulloch, who again gets through a man in a work for Hale. I feel he deserves that break just to 
goal at some point for himself. Often the supplier. It's brought down defensively. Played into space. Jorgensen, nice turn from him. Pursued by Giles. Stolen away from him by Giles. Really good play by Chad Giles. And Giles gets a little nudge that time from Cabral, but he comes up with the ball again. Short pass into the circle. Fremantle on the turn, and there is the equalising goal. And Chad Giles should take all the credit, although Aaron Hazel will be the man given the credit. Hazel with a good shot on the turn. And Chad Giles, though, persistently stealing it and then setting up Hazel. And to think Giles wouldn't have been playing if Matt Bird hadn't have been injured. Oh, just a minute and a half before the final break. Well, remember the stat I shared with you at halftime. Hale have never won at the Bateau Turf since Fremantle Coburn moved here. Is that hoodoo going to continue today? It's been a real nip and tuck game. As I said, they also, usually in this fixture, average five goals a game. I don't think we're going to see five goals today. Although if we do, it's going to be a belter of a final 15 minutes. So just being told to take the ball back. Lee Cormack checking that he's in the right position. Squeeze that through to Jimmy McPherson. That went... I thought it was off the shin pads, but it's clearly gone off the stick. It's going to be a long corner. Jimmy McPherson on the 23. Umpire just telling him to bring it across to be directly opposite where it crossed the baseline. Dylan Martin goes wide to Lee Cormack. Cormack plays it first time. And it's just not the touch that Matt Edgar would have liked. Good lead, though, by Edgar once again. Brought down under pressure. Good work by Bowen. Norman trying to keep possession as Fremantle really applying the pressure in the midfield. That's a strong challenge coming in from Darren McCormick. And the crowd appreciating it. And that is the end of the quarter. The Hooter going. And so Hale, who puffed and huffed and puffed all through that quarter, just could not bro down Ben Rennie's house. He kept his goal intact. Jared Crick was beaten by Aaron Hazel, so we head into the final break. It is Fremantle Coburn 1, Hale 1. Whistle goes for the players to break up. Ben Rennie, the helmet goes on and he starts the long walk down to his goal. He did well in that quarter to keep Fremantle Coburn in this match. And then Chad Giles with a brilliant steal and then persistent play by him to ensure that he kept possession before he fed Aaron Hazel, who leveled things up for the hosts. So 15 minutes to go. Both these teams looking for their first win of the season in 2024 in this round two. 
Will either team come out on top? Hale, get us underway. Thrown again long at the restart. It's not brought down well into the circle. Tried to play it across, but good defensive play again. Main car, I think it was. Oh, no, Dylan Martin it was actually came across and just calmly... Martin and Colin Batch said back in the Olympic year that he just did the simple things consistently well. I have to say his passing a couple of times tonight has been a little awry, but I'm sure he will fix that as the season goes on. Stolen away again by Kale Webster. Webster, lovely stick skills from him, but Again, good skills from Benji Austin. Austin, good pass infield. He went to Jorgensen. Cabral now to Wallace and a short pass to Braden King. Oh, the Fremantle Town Crier. You could hear him there. Matt Allen calling the Magpies to come on. In possession well, Charlie Norman, pursued by Jilly. Lone man up front. Chasing everything at the moment is Aaron Hazel, waiting for a mistake. King plays it forward and appeals. Oh, Charlie Norman. Well, the umpires are going to confer. Charlie Norman was sure that it should have been a penalty corner. I have to say, it looked it to me. And the umpire on this side, the question is whether it's a free hit just outside. It's going to be just outside, yeah. So Jorgensen over the ball for Hale. Circle of black shirts surrounding him. It's almost like one of those old westerns where they got surrounded. Now it's Austin. He does a little lap around the ball. That'll be his training for the week. Comes back to Braden King. Fremantle Coburn push out. Three of them in a row. Goes wide down the right-hand side. Fancel trying to feed it forward. Stolen well, though. And Fremantle Coburn get the chance to attack now. Hale penalised just on halfway. Ball given to Lane Carr. Chile had made a good run if the ball had been played early across the field of play. It comes to Gilly now. Oh, McPherson, a gentle touch. Wallace steals it. Kept in play, though. That was good play by Stefan Moutet. Oh, what a pass that was in the end from Charlie Johnston. Surging through the middle, McCulloch wanting to get the shot away. Brilliant defence coming back by Lane Carr. Well, you felt that McCulloch was going to get the space to get the shot away, and Carr appeared from nowhere. The man from Matcham. So... A yellow card issued to Hale. So they're going to be down a player for five minutes. We've got just under 12 remaining in the match. And the big question is, can Fremantle make this count? I think it was Hrobelar who got the card. Just try and confirm that shortly. Wide on the right now for Fremantle. Played square by Lee Cormack to Dylan Martin. Now onto the left-hand side. There's a little bit of space coming around the side, but Blake Wallace snuffs out that little avenue of attack and now steals possession for Hale. And then the free hit comes Hale's way. Well, a 
again. Scrappy little bit of play. Free hit though going against Dylan Martin. And Hale have the ball just inside the half. Matt Van Sal looks to go inside. Webston played the pass on the outside to McCulloch. Covering across though was good work again by McPherson. Hale ball down by the corner flag on the left hand side. Sam McCulloch takes a little touch. McPherson waits to stick jab it away. McCulloch right in the corner at the moment. Trying to create some space for himself. Nothing really doing. Fremantle hemming him in. He's edging back towards the 23. Spins and looks to go towards goal. But again, thwarted at the edge of the circle by good strong defence. And that defence came from Chad Giles. Van has stolen it back for Hale. Chasing down is Edgar. Ashton turns in the midfield. Goes wide to Fukunaga. I said it was Hrobla. I think it's Jorgensen actually that's over on the sideline. Oh, just taken over the side. Cabral in from the side for Hale. Good work again by Fremantle. Great defensive play. Here's Krobola. Comes back to him. Good work again by Bowen. Nice turn from Charlie Johnston. Stolen away, though. Good work again by Chad Giles. Giles has really been outstanding, in my opinion, for Fremantle Coburn tonight. Love to see how many tackles he's won. You'd want to keep the ball away from him. He's doing a good job on Josh Bowen. And a nice turn. And it will be Fremantle ball. About 10 metres inside. Chad Giles comes across. Self-passes. Carries towards the 23. Pushed it way too far ahead, though, of Aaron Hazel that time. So 16 to Hale. We're approaching the halfway stage of the final quarter. Tied up at one apiece. Hale looking for their first win at the Bateau Turf. Both teams looking for their first win of the season. It's going to break for Fukunaga. Fukunaga into the circle. Ben Rennie covers across well. Long corner won by Fukunaga. So Josh Bowen now over the ball for Hale. Back it goes to Hrobola. Wide it goes to Benji Austin. Austin again thwarted as he tries to get in by Matt Edgar. And then it will be a Fremantle Coburn free hit. We are now halfway through the final quarter. Gobin de Gilt, one touch and plays it forward. That's picked up though in the defensive line by Braden King. Short pass from him. And it'll be a free hit. King over the ball again. Wants to throw it into the air. He's done that a lot tonight, Braden King. And it hasn't paid dividends that time. Fremantle just slowing things down. Comes wide to Fraser Gilly. Great covering work coming across that time again from Benji Austin, who's been huge for help. Bowen just losing out again under pressure from Kima. Gobin Gilt lifting it up, but swatted away. And the crowd not happy that he is the player penalised. So it's hail ball again. Fremantle Coburn fans on the edge of their seats. They want that win. Ashton just let it run away from him. In the end goes to Krobola. And there's a clear push in the back on Bowen from Harrison Kima. Whistle was a little bit slow in coming. I think it was just the umpire slow getting it up to his mouth. Krobola goes wide again. Benji Austin carries it out over halfway, feeds it forward. Well, appeals for a foot. Lane Carr plays on. Fremantle on the attack now through Aaron Hazel. Hazel looks up, tries to square it. It'll come back down for Hazel. I 
think there was confusion there as to who the ball came up off. Hazel was bringing it down. So the umpire's just calming things down. Ball comes back again to Lee Cormack. Wide once more, Dylan Martin. Little shimmy from him. Fukunaga sticks to him like glue. Cormack again. Martin again. Fukunaga appears. Forces him infield and makes him play the ball back. Charlie Norman now puts pressure on Cormack. Comes wide to Gilly. Gilly gets the better that time of Faulkner. And Faulkner diving in with the stick gives away a penalty corner. And the home fans feel that this may well be their moment to steal the game with just under five minutes remaining. That's a reminder again, you'll probably get a review of this game on the Magpod. Magpies are now producing their own podcast hosted on the very YouTube page you're watching this game on. So when you finish watching, please like and subscribe and make sure you don't miss any further episodes of the Magpod, the podcast for the Magpies. So Dylan Martin lining up once more. And alongside him is Aaron Hazel. Will they go with Hazel at the first battery or will they stick with Martin? They've gone with Hazel this time. It's not a good injection. He's kept it alive and another penalty corner won by him. It's a third penalty corner of the game now. For Fremantle, Coburn. Hazel and Martin in unison there as they were spinning their sticks in their hands. Good ball in, Hazel flicks, Crick's got down low. Oh, the clearance is a poor one. And Fremantle Coburn square it, it's bobbled up, going to be squared again, shot on the turn from Kima. And Jared Crick again to the rescue for Hale. Fukunaga now looking to turn. Oh, the free hit is gone. Fremantle Coburn's way just inside the 23. Gill takes it quickly, great defensive cover coming across that time. That was Asger Wade who came across with that one. So we've got just under four minutes left now. Can either side find a winner? Get their first win of the season. If it stays like this, it'll be their first points of the season, either of them. Dylan Martin brings it down from the night sky. Lays it forward once more. Harrison Kima trying to turn off Sam Ashton. It went over the side, but I think it was his foot. It was indeed. So free hit, Gobin Gill over the ball. He leaves it now for Dylan Martin. Martin, top of the circle. First time in it went and trying to get the deflection was Matt Edgar. Uh, Edgar's been there or thereabouts all night. McCulloch now, a mistrap from him. Just when he needed it to just stick on the end of his stick. Dylan Martin will play it in from the side. Martin taking his time. Well, you think he was waiting because they had to hold up play because one of the ball kids was actually on the pitch. And then he was waiting to be told it was okay to continue. Maybe though deliberately killing a bit of time, who knows. Through the middle it goes, good steal again from Jorgensen who's back on. So Hale back now to their full quota, comes to Dylan Martin once more. Two and a half minutes left in the game. Collected by Edgar but not well enough and Jorgensen just cleared it for a short period. Nice turn from Aaron Hazel, feeds it out wide to Edgar. Good covering defence again, coming from Braden King. Dylan Martin self passes from the long corner. It ricochets off the stick off McCulloch. Safely, though, down the line it will go and it will be collected by Jack Faulkner. Faulkner looks to accelerate forward. He's taking on Lee Cormack. Goes square. That's a good pass. Picked up well by Cabral. Cabral now carrying it into the circle. Cabral trying to get it across. Good defense once more. Fremantle Coburn scrambled it clear. 
Still alive for Hale, they pushed towards goal that time by Bowen. But he never got the connection he wanted and keeping it in play is Hazel. That's gone up off the stick of King into the body. So it's Aaron Hazel's free hit, he weaves one way, right then left, coming back is Braden King, steals it back, no one seems to want it. King goes, I'll have it and gets there ahead of Lane Carr. Hale, can they pinch it as they come forward? Not with a pass like that. Fukunaga apologizes to McCulloch. Daryl McCormick wants the goal before the end of the game. We're approaching the final minute. Gobin Gilt plays it forward again, gets the angle wrong. Over the side it goes. Now it's Hale demanding the ball quickly. They want to go on the attack as quickly as they can. Throw to the air. That'll be straight onto the stick of Gilt. Infield he goes. Suddenly manages to find Nick Jennings. Jennings short pass to Lane Carr. Carr didn't get it under control first time, but will at the second attempt. Plays it forward to the edge of the circle. Nice turn. Blake Wallace is there and appeals for a penalty. No, it's a foot outside the circle. Well, conferring with the other umpire on halfway who said it was inside the circle. It is a penalty corner. So Fremantle now with their fourth penalty corner of the match. And we have 32 seconds remaining. And this could be a painful blow for Hale. But an ecstatic moment for Fremantle Coburn if they can score. Jared Crick waits under the bar. His helmet is up. He pulls it down over his face. Gobin Gilt goes to the baseline. Dylan Martin just wiping his hands in his shorts, running his fingers through his hair. Aaron Hazel a lot more relaxed at the first battery. They go to Hazel. It's not a good trap. Oh, and Wallace comes out and steals it. It's with Hale now. McCulloch feeds it down the line. Cabral, who scored the opening goal tonight, pushes it into the path of Jorgensen. Jorgensen into the circle it goes. And Faulkner penalised for a push in the back. We're running out of time into the last 10 minutes. Fremantle throw it forward, coming across. King brings it down. And there will be no more time in the match. And there's a thump of the stick into the turf from Aaron Hazel. Fremantle Coburn so close to stealing that game. But in the end, they keep their unbeaten record against Hale at the Bateau Turf intact. Neither team able to find a winner. The final score here, Fremantle Coburn 1, Hale 1.